Uh, this is a fascinating question. And I think uh, one, you know, the, from the position of, of Chile, you are at this moment uniquely positioned to understand it, right? Uh, big ideas generally begin uh, in response to some sort of unsatisfactory situation, right? And then you have social movements, people organizing, thinking, debating, and mobilizing for change. Uh, and uh, these broader social and cultural cultural currents sometimes influence existing institutions. And then once you get to the level of influencing existing institutions, then you start to change the flow of investment, uh, the way resources are allocated. And then you have different kinds of infrastructure built in different places. And then this rewrites or transforms the surface of the earth and reorganizes social relationships. And it's a kind of uh, dialectical process like that between slow institutional geographical processes and faster social currents you know, that um, play out on the level of daily life. This is such an important question. Uh, so one, rare earth elements aren't rare, uh, but because they are used in just about uh, every sector in contemporary society, if we understand them to be rare, we then uh, we might get very concerned about what this means for the future or uh, whether the big questions uh, like, for example, can we solve inequality? Can we provide enough energy, food, transport, infrastructure for all of the people on earth? Um, if we think that the fundamental elements that we use to do that stuff are rare or scarce, then we've already answered the question to all of those big challenges. We've already answered the question and we've answered the question, no, <laughs> we can't, in fact, reach our sustainable development goals if we believe that the materials that we need to source that are actually rare. Uh, so it's really important to be clear on that point because that one little word uh, has immense implications for how we fundamentally understand what is possible in our current social movement uh, and particularly in relation to our development challenges and to needing the climate emergency. I mean, it's very, it's an interesting situation because uh, historically, the way that uh, we've organized mining is uh, in a way that really fundamentally has not prioritized social, environmental, and labor protections. In fact, uh, we have historically punished um, either firms who have tried to do the right thing by investing in these areas, um, because that then makes them non-competitive in our political economic order. And um, we've also, set things up in our political economy to punish communities that demand something better than absolute devastation, right? By uh, rewarding firms for leaving and going somewhere else, right? And it's in this uh, historical context that the rare earth industry left the West and migrated to China because the rules of the game were such that, well, uh, who's who can do it most cheaply and uh, in which places are the populations least empowered to demand basic decent conditions. Uh, in the latter part of the 20th century, China filled that role, but people in China also really rejected this and uh, different people at different levels of China's government became increasingly alarmed with uh, the environmental crisis that was uh, fundamentally transforming the country. And so for almost 15 years, uh, China has been working to slowly move away from supplying 90, 97% of uh, the global supply of rare earth elements. And uh, it's controversial in the West because I think uh, there's very few people who have a more comprehensive understanding of this history and also uh, may be operating under the uh, false impression that rare earths are rare, right? 
right? And so if you look at the current situation and you only have a small view of the picture, you think rare is so rare, China mines most of them, then people quite often jump to the incorrect but quite logical conclusion that China mines most rare earth elements because China has most rare earth elements. And that makes people very frightened uh, that there seems to be no escape from dependence on China. But in fact, uh, the rest of the world wants to diversify the global rare earth supply chain. And also China's government wants to diversify the global rare earth supply chain. So there is in fact a global consensus here. Uh, but I think uh, the, the, controversy is, the controversy is very compelling. So once people latch onto it, it becomes very difficult to let go of. Because it's, it's kind of like a perfect story, right? It's like a Hollywood movie or a video game. Uh, but reality is actually not quite as exciting. 